So in the movie, we, we you know we have there's there's a, a scene where we have just incredible access uh, with Catherine Abreu at the United Nations Climate Change Conference, where she's you know advocating for for climate change policy with with delegates from the Canadian government, and I think that type of access is really impressive. And I and I think people need to understand this that you know things that the, these climate change activists are able to make a serious impact in government, and I think that we we try to show that. In, in the documentary, um, and you know, we at there we we obviously didn't follow someone on the oil and gas side, so to speak. And I don't even know if there was anyone there, to be honest. I really hope that Canadians watch that because what we were trying to demonstrate in that scene was how trusted the IPCC recommendations are, mm -hmm. and I think that that's one um, one part of this dialogue that we really need to talk about is, you know, do we trust the IPCC recommendations and, and policies? And if so, why? I've talked to, you know, a lot of these people who, who are advocating for the oil and gas industry. And one of the things that I've really noticed is that we, the messaging sometimes doesn't explain to Canadians and people around the world how lives are saved and made better because of the Canadian oil and gas industry. Uh, I think once we get lost in the numbers and the number of jobs and the amount of wealth and transfer payments and all these types of things, you've lost people. I mean, I get that that, that makes sense for people in the C-suite and that makes sense for you know, politicians sometimes to be talking about these things. But for the average person, I think we care about humanity. And I think if Canadians and people around the world understood that people's lives are literally saved by having access to cheap energy, um, it would be really eye-opening for them. And to see the impact that the Canadian oil and gas industry is having on people's lives, whether that be you know, a respirator in a hospital or you know, babies in, an, in, in some sort of um, an intensive care unit, th things like that, it's real world. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's a message that we really, we really need to get out as Albertans, that we, we are having that type of impact. And I think what, what goes on in this is, you know, and I learned this from Alex Epstein, actually. Uh, he, he taught me about this, is the concept of the moral high ground in an argument. And I think when it comes to environmentalism, that's really one of the strongest things they do, is they're able to show things like, look how terrible this is, and look, you know, here, here's this, this kind of catastrophe. Well, immediately you've taken the moral high ground. Mm -hmm. And I think what they don't show you is, okay, here's a number of lives of people who would die without access to cheap energy. And that's, you know, that's, that's a, it's a very unsettling and, and disturbing thought to think about, but that is a reality we need to face. If I had to do it over again, I would certainly do this, this documentary. I mean, what I've learned, um, truth will be lifted up. You know, it may take a while, and you may feel defeated at first because you've tried to put inject truth into the world, and it may feel like a failure off at the beginning, and then the months go by, but all of a sudden, a truth will come to the surface. And that's where I feel with this film, Global Warning. I understand it did not pop when it first came out. I understand we're still trying to get it, but it will be lifted up eventually, somehow, some way. Um, and that's how this works. Um, I don't know if it'll be in my lifetime, but it, one day it will come to the surface. Thank you.